Zechariah 4, verse 1 through 7. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of sleep. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick, all of gold, with a bowl on the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof, and the two oil trees, olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake unto the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these things, my lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these things can be? And I said, No, my lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof, with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Verse 1, the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep. Like all the prophets, Zechariah is no different. He did not ask for the Lord to give him a vision. None of the prophets ever asked to serve the Lord. The Lord chose them. The Lord imposed these visions and prophecies upon them to share with his people. And such is the case here. The same was with the apostles. None of them asked to follow the Lord. He called them and chose them. So the message here is for the people of God. Now, Zechariah does not say that he had fallen asleep, but he says that the angel waked him as a man that is waked out of sleep. This is, this is the realm of my own opinion here, but my opinion is that he was not sleeping, but that perhaps he was thinking about what he had seen in the vision before. And when this angel came and waked him, this, this vision that we see in chapter 4 was like a jolt to his senses. It awaked him, awakened him that way because uh, he was, his human senses were inadequate to receive what he saw. <clears throat> so it's like a, I, I see this as kind of a jolt when a man is suddenly wakened up out of a deep sleep. And he said unto me, What seest thou? What's, what do you see, Zechariah? This is asked of the prophets seven times, three times to Jeremiah, two times to Amos, and two times to Zechariah. They were asked, what do you see? And this is also asked, Jesus asked this of the blind man that he healed in Bethsaida. We don't have an actual quote, but Mark covers this. It says, after Jesus spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw aught. In other words, do you see anything? Now, you should not be surprised when the Lord asks you this. What do you see? And you want to be able to, to say that you have seen something. And when you tell the Lord what you've seen, then you can ask him to tell you more. Tell me what you see. And I said, I have looked. Nearly all of the Bible versions that I have say it this way. I have looked. I did see a couple of versions that say, I see. But I like this, I have looked. What do you see? Well, I have looked. So when the Lord asks you this, what do you see in the book of Zechariah? You can say, well, I have looked. What do you see in the book of the Revelation? You can say, I have looked, Lord. I have looked, and here's what I see. <clears throat> I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick all of gold with a bowl on the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. I uh, looked at several other Bible translations, and it did not clear this up any. <clears throat> so uh, this is something that Sister Michelle and I shared together. I, I asked her to get a p piece of paper and a, and a pencil and just sketch what you think this looks like, and I'll... I'll sketch what I think it looks like, and not that we're depending on each other to interpret everything in the scriptures, but I, I knew from the start this should be a lamp that, that's actually functional. This isn't just a decoration. Because, see, this, this is all Zechariah saw here in this fourth chapter, that no one spoke in the vision, nothing happened in the vision. All he saw was this lamp. So it's whatever we see, it's, it's got to work. It's got to make spiritual sense. Whatever's in this lamp. I 
borrowed a bowl from Sister June. As you can see, this is not a pure gold bowl. But I, I wanted to have this up here just to kind of show you um, what I, the way I think this lamp was constructed. I, I'm not an artist, so I couldn't draw it. But, but the bowl's on top, it holds the oil, and there are seven lamps. I'll, I'll get to what some of the other versions say about the lamps in a bit. But there's seven pipes going to each lamp. Now, the way I understand it is like from right here in this bowl, there would be seven pipes extending right here. You could count down here, seven pipes going to one lamp. Then here in another place in the bowl, there would be seven more pipes going to another lamp. And it would, the lamps were around the periphery of the bowl, seven lamps around here, seven pipes to each lamp. And uh, I forget if it was a dictionary, one of the commentators said it was actually like a chandelier, if that helps you understand, only it wasn't hanging, it was on a stand. And, and we'll see here, this, this makes spiritual sense. This makes sense, pardon me for speaking underneath the pulpit, this makes sense to have a lamp arranged this way, and I believe it would actually work if we were to construct a lamp like that. <clears throat> First of all, the, the lamp, and I, I may refer to it as a candle or candlestick or lamp stand, this, this is the same thing. <clears throat> the lamp is a stand that has pipes filled with olive oil, wicks that soak up the olive oil and burn, similar to a kerosene lamp. So when, when the scriptures, especially the King James Version, uses the word candle or candlestick, it's not talking about like a wax candle that we have these days. There was nothing like that in ancient times. They, they burned olive oil and the King James Version calls it a candle or candlestick. So that's what we're talking about. <clears throat> this is not the same kind of construction as the seven-pronged candlestick that was in the tabernacle, what we also know as the menorah. This is different from that, as you saw. I believe this to be actually considerably larger and more complicated in its construction and uh, I, I don't want this description of the lampstand to be tedious or laborious, or I don't, I don't want this to be a distraction from the message. But again, I do want to take some time on this because this is all Zechariah saw. So it, it, has, to be, it has to mean something. <clears throat> the way that God works is seen in this lampstand. So it's made of pure gold or solid gold. It's the best the brightest, most highly valued, and most beautiful of precious metals. So that's why the Lord chose this. There's a lot of gold in the tabernacle. And so when we, when we see this, the Lord wants us to think these kinds of thoughts. A golden, a pure lampstand giving off light. <clears throat> and it has a bowl on top of it. The bowl obviously holds oil for the lamps. So it's on top. Now if you put the bowl on the bottom... None of the oil is going to get to the lamp. So again, this, this is functional. The bowl's on top, sitting high, so the, the oil will flow out to the lamps. 